Hi, welcome to Blitz Basic Programming for Beginners, part 3. Uh, this session we're going to be looking at how to draw a graphic onto the screen and move it around. Uh, this is a graphic which you may have drawn in Microsoft Paint, uh, you may have downloaded it off the internet, or you may have designed it in Photoshop. Or you may have drawn it on paper and just scanned it in and saved it off somewhere. So for this session I'm actually going to use just a simple shape that I've drawn in Microsoft Paint that's actually zoomed in, it's actually a bit smaller than that but it's just so you can see it cl a bit clearer. I've saved this object already into a directory for this, tu for this tutorial. Uh, this can be any directory on your hard drive. Uh, what we'll do later is we'll actually save the code for the program into the same directory um, when we run it. So make sure it's a directory which you're going to remember where it is later on. Uh, I've just called the object object.png. I'm using PNG because PNG doesn't change any of the background like when when you save an image in JPEG and reload it and zoom in you'll see that some of the colors have been changed or some of the background might look a bit more blurry than normal. Uh, I'm also not using BMP or bitmap format because bitmap is quite a large format to use and you're going to be wanting to put your games online for other people to download so you're going to want to use something like PNG which compresses the graphic file down a bit so it's a bit of a smaller size. So we've got our object saved and so if we go into Blitz 3D we're going to set up our graphics mode so we're going to use 640 across by 480 up 16-bit color and mode 2. Mode 2 means that it's going to run it in a window rather than full screen which is mode 1 we're going to load our image so we're just going to use the load image command oh, and before I put load image I need to tell it what the image is going to be called I use a naming convention called IMG object like so just so that I know that if I have any variable in the game which starts with an IMG then that's an image um, so I shouldn't be trying to play it like a sound effect or add numbers onto it like I would with a number variable so I'm just going to use the load image command which is uh, load image open brackets and then just a string of where that what the actual image is called so object.png I'm then going to set up some coordinates for where I actually want the image to display on the screen so I'm going to say x equals 50 and I'm going to say y equals maybe 350 now coordinates on a screen uh, don't work the same as they do on a map where uh, y goes from the bottom of the map up the map, it actually goes the other way around so and here you can see that you start at zero, 0, at the top left of the screen x works across to the right just like it does on a map up to the coordinate of the far right which for our example is 640 and y actually works down the screen up to 480 which is actually at the bottom of the screen so if you increase your y value you're actually going to move the image down the screen not up the screen so you just have to remember to uh, use the opposite of what you want for y otherwise you're going to end up drawing things upside down so going back to our blitz code we're going to set up a what's called a buffer to draw the image onto this uh, this is done by using a set buffer command so we're going to set the buffer to the back buffer back buffer is basically like a screen in the computer's memory that it will draw to and then you then use a flip command to flip that screen onto the main screen so you can actually see what you've drawn uh, I've tried to illustrate this a little bit here so you have the front buffer which is what's actually on the screen and then you have another screen which is your back buffer so you draw your graphics onto your back buffer so here we are drawing out our graphics, drawing our program, this is this is drawing the main loop. And then the flip command actually moves that onto the front screen and moves the front screen onto the back screen. So we can then draw the next frame of what it is we're going to draw. So going back into our source code here so we're setting it to draw to the back buffer we're going to start a loop we're going to use a z variable because we're going to add the z variable onto the x variable to make the object move um, it'll make more sense in a moment so we're going to say z equals 
0 to 300, so each time we go through the loop, z will move up by one value. So it'll start at 0 and we'll go through the loop 300 times until it reaches 300. All four loops have to end with the next. And now we come to drawing our graphics. So first thing we want to do is clear, this, clear the actual back buffer that we're drawing to. So we're not just drawing one image and then drawing the image on top of itself again the next time, because you just end up with a long stream with the same object. So CLS means clear screen. Um, if we indent our code a bit. I'm then going to draw the image. So draw our image. The name of the image. IMG object, sorry, not image. Then you just put a comma and the x and y coordinates of that object. So we've already set up x and y as variables. So we're just going to put x and y. And now I will need to increase, for each, each loop I need to increase x by z which is going to be increasing as well so I'm just going to say that x equals 50 plus z I guess not that clean but it, it'll work, it'll move smooth and now we're going to flip our back buffer onto our front buffer so we're ready then to draw onto the uh, what was the what was on the screen to draw the next frame and replace it on the main screen. So that's our that's our complete program, apart from end, just to, to actually quit the program. So now if I save this program off, and the reason I need to save it, I'm going to call it animate. The reason you need to save it first before running it is so that it knows where that actual image is. Because I've not specified a path, a full file path, for that object, like C, Blitz, image, object.png, or whatever, it wouldn't know where to actually find the file, unless it's already in the directory that you're running the program in. So you save the program to that directory, and then run the program. So if we run this, we get our image moving smoothly across the screen, uh, and it's adding Z onto the X command. Uh, you notice the program just finished there, that was as soon as it had gone 300 pixels across it finishes this loop, so it jumps out of this loop onto end and just quits the program. And that's it. So we've loaded an image, we've drawn it onto the screen, we've created a loop to change the image coordinate, and then we've cleared the screen and drawn that image again. So we end up with a smooth image moving across the screen. For the next session we're actually going to use the same code that's here, so we're not going to start from a blank one again. So we use the same code and we'll be adding in user input so you'll, you'll be able to use the cursor keys to move the image around the screen. And we'll also be using something called game timer code because at the moment uh, this will actually run sometimes really really fast if your screen doesn't refresh uh, at a certain speed. Most screens refresh at 60 hertz, but you there's a setting some people turn off which means this will just run at like 400 times a second just fly around the screen. So we'll be using game uh, time code, which means that your game will run at the same speed no matter how fast someone's computer is or no matter how fast their monitor's updating or whatever. So that will be in session four. Obviously leave any comments about this below if you think I'm skipping too fast ahead. And also there will be links to this code as well as any related tutorials to this and as well as any games I'm working on on the right hand side under the details section. Okay, so until next time, I'll see you later.